unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months or just muted petapixels, you might have noticed a lot of new camera announcements recently. Canon just released their flagship mirrorless cameras, Nikon just announced theirs, and then there's the Sony blah 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 whatever. Well today we're not talking about any of those. Today we are talking about this guy. The Panasonic FZ35. What? You never heard of it? Well, let me introduce you. It's got less megapixels than the big dogs by a lot, less frames per second, a really bad EVF, caps out at 720p video. It's perfect really. Let's give it a go. You might be asking, why now? Why would anyone buy this camera over 10 years later? Well, actually, there's a lot of reasons. Super zoom cameras present an enormous value for money, despite not getting the respect they deserve from the photography community. They're super versatile. Not only do you get the obvious advantage of a built-in massive zoom range, but you get it in a small package that is usually equally capable and stills in video. And they're cheap. There are modern super zoom cameras less than 500 bucks with absolutely stellar image quality, video quality, and more. Of course, there's always trade-offs for the more expensive, much, much larger cameras. But I think for what you get in the package, it's an incredible value for money. Being the cheap person that I am, I wanted to go back to see if I could get one of the best from 10 years ago and see if it was any good. I succeeded, and this guy only cost me 30 bucks, even after tax and shipping. Some people will tell you that you need the nicest, most expensive camera gear to take good photographs. Well, I'm under this spooky rock to tell you that that isn't the case. There are loads of good cameras out there nowadays for super cheap. You look at the images and decide if it was worth it. Normally with a lens range this long, you'd be limited in what you could shoot because of shake and high shutter speeds. However, this camera has stabilization and it's pretty dang impressive. Okay, the stabilization of these older cameras isn't top notch, but it's actually really good. I can shoot this handheld without shake with the stabilization on. So all the way zoomed out, that's like a 480 millimeter equivalent at like 1 60th of a second. Now that is important. You start going below that and you will see shake. So it is important to pay attention to that just like you would with any other camera, but still, that's really impressive for a $30 camera. I mean, look at this. I took a picture of the freaking moon, handheld. That's so cool, for 30 bucks. But the stabilization can't do everything for you. Here's a cool shot of an owl that I missed because I had the camera setting wrong. He didn't wait for me to figure it out. A moment of silence, please, for this lost shot. When you're buying a camera, you're buying it for its ability to help you take beautiful photos. Not for whatever topped out spec it has, or, I mean, that's what you should be buying a camera for. The good news is that this camera soars for 30 bucks. The colors are beautiful. The lens is usably sharp across the range. You can even get a little bokeh if you want. Just stand back and zoom in tight. As another evidence of image quality, I would like to take this moment to announce that almost all these photos are straight out of the camera JPEGs. But this has less to do with me trying to prove a point and more to do with Snapseed's lack of compatibility with .rw2 raw files and my laziness in figuring that out. Now that we're halfway through this video, I have a confession to make. I owned this camera eight years ago. I wanted an affordable telephoto and video camera. I remember being so excited and impressed with this camera back then. I paid 200 bucks for it. It was pretty amazing. So why can't it be amazing now? After months of searching, our self-aggrandizing photographer has captured an extremely rare and unpleasant bird-eating deer. What an absolute treat. 
you can catch the rest of this gripping documentary on Netflix, but until then, there's a sample of the video quality. Okay, it looks pretty lacking compared to modern offerings. But not too bad if you're watching this on a mobile phone, which according to my stats, almost half of y'all are. What it lacks in resolution, it makes up for an impressive sharpness for telephoto video. Remember what you're getting and how much you're paying. My 30 bucks got me 450 millimeters zoomed in video with stabilization. This was all shot handheld. A camera like this, as versatile and light as it is, just kind of deserves to be carried around, ready for any moment that might come up, like if a bird flies across the scene, or, well, that would be <laughs> that would be too quick. If a bunny hops along this trail, or a snake comes out, or something, I want to be prepared. But I don't want it around my neck, and I don't want it in my backpack. I want it faster than that. So you can buy yourself one of these little clips. This is a capture clip by Peak Design, and I love it for my bigger cameras too, but it works out great for this. I even mountain bike with this on because um, it feels really secure, and then even if it isn't, I'm not super worried because the camera is cheap. The clip cost twice as much as the camera did. If you're liking this idea and you have a few more bucks to spend, say $100 or so, then your world opens up to a whole bunch of other used super zooms of yesterday options. The features that I would consider worth paying extra for would be a flippy screen, a better EVF, 1080p video, though as noted 720 works great for social media. And believe it or not, you can get even further zoom ranges. It baffles me that super zooms aren't recommended as often for practical photographers wanting an all-in-one package for cheap. The convenience match with image quality is top notch. If you're on a super tight budget but want to shoot telephoto, shoot some video, have a toss around, do it all camera you're not worried about breaking, then I don't know if you can do any better than an old, used, forgotten about super zoom camera. If you like this video, subscribe for more like it. I enjoy finding cheap, forgotten camera gear and promoting shooting what you got, shooting what you love, and being content. Go out there and take pictures of whatever, with whatever, have fun, and until next time, happy snapping.